Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. <laughs> Jill's, a, I would say, a lot more smarter than Chris in in the sense of like book smart. I would say I think Chris is probably more field and uh, street smart. Uh, although Jill does have like lock picking skills and other things like that, like that, so she's not an idiot when it comes to street smarts either. But in Jill's game, she's the one who has, has to mix the chemicals to defeat Plant Forty Two, um, whereas Chris doesn't. Uh, he relies on Rebecca for that. So I would say, according to plant, in the Plant 42 realm, that's the only difference between the two characters' game. Hopefully that helps you out. And I'm and, and new to Ari, that's awesome. I mean, I, I love hearing when people are, you know, new to the Resident Evil universe because I love this universe. It's awesome. Uh, we have Urzatron. What's up? Urzatron is uh, my new friend who came in uh, the other night when I was live streaming and and fact check me whenever I, my memory was too fuzzy on on resident evil lore so i really appreciated that and uh, i'm glad you're here urzatron uh, urzatron says the lighter is in the small library above you oh perfect that's where we're going right now so we'll grab the lighter there but uh and you, oh i'll have it in the next few minutes perfect i think do i have to add lighter fluid to it is that a thing you have to do in this version or um or is that uh am i remembering that wrong Lil C asks, how do I subscribe to Urzatron? I think if you just click on Urzatron's name, I don't, I'm not familiar how the ch chat works, but click on Urzatron's name and just follow, follow Urzatron. Barry. Jill, any good news? Other than I'm still alive in this madhouse? And the direction Barry just came from was um, where Forest Spayer is. So I find that kind of interesting. Wonder what he was doing over there. Uh, Lil C says, wow, you get to play some new RE7. Great. Um, yes, I know. I'm really excited. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I mean, it could be like another tech demo where I just put on the VR helmet and it, it plays it for me. It could be a level where I actually am holding a controller and interacting you know with the game i don't know fully what it is yet capcom was pretty vague and i think that was just because uh you know they're they're still working out some things and obviously um i asked them like is it you know is it okay to talk about this stuff and they're like yeah because since you don't really know anything right now it's it's not a big deal but uh after i play it i'll have to ask them what i can and can't say on 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 my video whatever i film you know it's funny you say that the actual Skin Grill is referencing the prototype Crimson Head that is now in the coffin um, because that journal hasn't been changed from the original one. Uh, so in the original game where there were no Crimson Heads, they talked about skinless gorillas. So I, I, I think, that, and especially they talked about feeding a pig to it, I, and at, later on you'll see little pens where the chimeras are kept. So I just think, and this is my just my opinion, I think they're t referring to the... Um, to the chimeras, but you, but definitely could be argued either way, for sure. Uh, I forgot to do this earlier, but this is a new feature. They added uh, a room under the stairs, and you hear down there the sounds of a woman moaning who uh, will we will learn is part of the Trevor family. This is Lisa, and she is uh, the daughter of the architect of this house. Uh, Spencer, Oswell E. Spencer is the founder of Umbrella and the one who, um, who you know, ultimately has this house it's called the spencer estates but uh he hired a man named trevor to uh to come over from england and design it and then or he designed it in england but then came over here uh, with his family to uh you know to have like a celebratory dinner of the completion of the house and the the future of umbrella and what ended up happening is him and his family get trapped here by oswald e spencer and they are uh, <laughs> they're trapped here and uh the, and trevor's own traps are used against him and caused him to uh him and his family to die in the house and they they inject the wife and the daughter with um some of the serums and i think actually and and Ruzatron, with your knowledge on the game you could probably help me out with this one they um i think they derive the nemesis parasite uh from lisa so uh so i think that's where the nemesis comes from is her body kind of takes to the virus in a way where um 
where uh, like no other zombie had. And 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 she she like she has these tentacles and stuff growing out of her, and so um, it just seems like I, I think I remember them saying like a parasite grew in her, and they pulled this parasite out, and it ended up becoming the 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 beginning stages of the nemesis parasite. Um, but Urzatron would probably probably know better at that than I would, uh, but I I think that's what what happened. Um, all right, so there are shotgun shells here. And I'm just gonna. Oh wait, no, no, no. We can't grab them because we need the inventory slot. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we're gonna come back to this area plenty of times to put the other masks in. So we'll uh, we'll just leave that there for now. It's a good point. Um, and thank you guys, by the way, for watching. I, I don't know if I've said that enough for the people that are watching. Um, I really appreciate it. This is my first day streaming on Twitch. Um, I played Metal Gear Solid Five earlier, and, and I jumped onto Resident Evil. And the reason being is because I'm. Oh, you know what? I'm going to be quiet for a second. Let you, you guys Chris check out Redfield, the cutscene. Alpha team, we're here to rescue you. Richard, what the hell happened to you? Chris, this place. Get your team out of here. Demons. Oh, dude, that arm. Don't talk. He seems to have been bitten by a poisonous snake. The size of the bite mark is huge. It's not just any ordinary snake. <laughs> Take my word for it. He needs serum. I left it in another room. I'll go get it. Please hurry. Hold on. I'll be back. All right. So this is kind of timed and kind of not. Um, I believe... I don't know which version they reinforce it more in, whether it's Jill's or Chris's. Um, but uh, I remember there was, a, I think before, there was a, a chance you could not make it back in time and and Richard could die there or something like that. Uh, I think, um, my, again, my memory's fuzzy on a lot of this stuff uh, and the multiple versions of this game that have come out. Because I've even played, um, which was pretty much just a port, but there was a game called Deadly Silence and it was Resident Evil 1 made for like the one of the Game Boy, the handheld systems. Um, and uh, Urzatron saying I have four minutes. Okay, so we'll we'll try to do this quickly. Um, but yeah, there was a Deadly Silence, which also had uh, first-person uh, elements in it. Uh, when you got into some of the combat, you could use the, the stylus to swipe, um, you know, your knife at zombies. So, uh, so yeah, I've played a lot of different versions of Resident Evil 1. Played it on the Sega Saturn. Um, if anyone remembers what the Sega Saturn was. All right. But so what I was saying is uh, the reason I decided not to play more Metal Gear tonight is uh, because I'm in like full-on Resident Evil mode, I uh, I am going to San Francisco on, on Thursday to Capcom headquarters to play some new levels of Resident Evil 7 that other people haven't played yet. And... Um, and so it's got me really into a uh, a big, you know, Resident Evil mode. And so, and it's, I just bought Metal Gear Solid Five, and I was like all excited to play more of it. But then I just was like, man, I got to get into Resident Evil mode. I'm going to be playing, you know, seven and uh, four, five, and six. They're going to have like a, they're doing a tour. They're going to 30 different cities in America with a truck, and uh, and uh, and the truck is a. Uh, it you know, has like Res Evil uh, 4, 5, and 6 on it. And I think like a demo of 7 or something that you can play. And it's going to pull into different cities and, and, and you guys can, you know, everyone can check it out and stuff. So um, that's pretty cool that they're doing that. And, um, but the Capcom invited me up there uh, to do not only that truck, but also to have a special experience to actually go into their headquarters, which has been a dream of mine for years. Uh, I'm a huge Capcom fan. Oop, excuse me. I, uh, too much soda today. I had some soda and uh, pizza earlier when I was live streaming, so I apologize for the, the belch. I will not make a habit of that, I promise. Very rude. All right. Let's go, uh, let's go save Richard. Rip Churd, as, uh, Urzatron said. Yeah, I know, Roddy. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm very grateful, uh, I'm blown away. I, I know I've never, never really get any kind of cool opportunities to like, I mean, I get a lot of good opportunities. I won't say that. I mean, I, you know, I, I moved out here to Los Angeles to kind of 
increase the chance of doing cool things to go to movie premieres and stuff like that. Um, you know, in hopes of, of things like that. But I never really had a company say like, Hey, you know, we want you to come to where we're, you know, developing, you know, either a game or a movie and actually get to experience something that, you know, most people don't get to experience that to me just, just makes me love Capcom even more. And, uh, and I, I'm just very grateful to, to have that opportunity. So if you're new to me, I'm going to be vlogging my entire trip to uh, San Francisco. I'm going to be videotaping everything and u uploading them to my YouTube channel. Um, so you can check out my YouTube channel. It's just Seek Donnelly. My name, S-I-I-K-E-D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y. Um, and uh, I, you know, mostly do movie and video game and comic book and Lego reviews on my channel. Hope this is what you wanted. Thank you. But I vlog sometimes, too. All right, we made it. Here, take it. It's a radio. Take care of yourself, Rebecca. Richard. He's okay. He's just unconscious. Rebecca, it's not safe here. Let's get Richard to a safer place. Right. You know, that was probably, that was kind of dumb of me, actually. Well, I should have saved should now. <laughs> um, so, uh, so if you guys don't mind, maybe I'll play just a little bit more so I can find some more ink ribbons and, um, and maybe knock out a few more things before I, uh, use up my last ink ribbon if I don't find any more. So, uh, yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll just stick to the first floor. We're gonna run into the zombie dogs, but I think I'm just gonna run through them, and we'll come back later with uh, with more, maybe with the shotgun or so. Well, actually, what we'll, I won't have the shotgun the next time I run through here. All right, one down. Am I still? How's my health? Okay, not like I have any to be. All right, well, at least we know this hallway is clear now. If you have a PS3, they re-released Silent Hill 2 and 3, and um, they did like some kind of re like audio remaster and visual remaster. I would hate for those to be your first experience because I f they really they really mess up a lot of the visuals and they they re-record the voice acting and it's it's just doesn't it doesn't sound nearly as uh, as true as the the first version was. Uh, where they purposely told the actors to act bad uh, or act badly um, so uh, yeah it's a it's it's a shame but if, if if you find it for like cheap like 20 bucks or something I would say I would say you know maybe buy it and check them out Silent Hill 2 is arguably one of the most populars in the franchise I think most people like Silent Hill 2 the best although I worked at a, a well they weren't called GameStop back then I worked at an electronic boutique when I was like 17 when that game came out and we had a lot of people return it like in the first couple days um yeah here's Forrest Bayer R.I.P. Lil C uh, <laughs> uh but yeah I worked at a, a game a, a electronic boutique and people were so mad with Silent Hill there were so many people coming back and going like I hate it. Like the first hour is just you running through the woods and nothing happens. You just see like meet one girl. And it was just really funny because uh, I was like, yeah, you got to give it time, man. That was lucky. Uh, Urgatron says, few words of advice for ammo conservation. It takes three flame rounds to kill plant 42 and four acid rounds to kill Yon uh, during the second encounter. Then five grenade rounds to kill Black Tiger. Dang, dude, you got that unlocked. You know what? I'm actually going to give me one second. I'm going to I'm going to pause this real quick. I'm going to take that note down on my my one note on my phone. So we're going to go in here and uh, solve this puzzle and unlock that that back gate just to get it out of the way. I do miss the paintings in this room. I'm not a big fan of this this church stained glass stuff, but um, whatever. They had to change the puzzle up somehow, so I get it. All right. 
that one set. Yeah, I think that was like that in the um, the novels too. Like in the novel, what I really liked about the novel was that there were chapters that uh, that were told from uh, Wesker's point of view, and uh, and you got into the head of the character. I think that's ultimately what made me like Wesker a lot was the novels, like uh, or the, the first novel where you actually get to see him. Like he's like when Jill comes back into the lobby to look for him. Um, after they hear the gunshot or whatever, she comes, or, or I think it's Chris, like comes back in the lobby. Wesker is up on the balcony on the second floor, crouched down, like looking down at him and, and you know, kind of trying to stay out of sight. And that's pretty neat um, that he did that. And then you, you, so in the novel, that was the thing is right from the get go, you knew Wesker was a bad guy. Like uh, in the novel, it was almost immediate. All right, so we got the green crown, the purple necklace, and the orange wristband. Perfect. All right, we'll go put this mask in. Urzatron, does it? When you being a speedrunner, is it uh, is it hard for you to watch someone like me play this and go so slow <laughs> at it compared to a speedrun, or do you already are like, oh no, I'm just here for fun and and uh, and you know, and I'm not I'm not stressing about that, uh, or you're like, oh man, this guy he just opens his inventory way too much. Um, I, I was always, I'm always curious like when people who have different play styles, if it's like, I just assume it's like you're the Flash. And uh, and you're watching someone uh, ch try to run, uh, <laughs> and you're just like, no, that's that's not how you run. Um, Lo C asks, where is Chris while all this is going on? Well, I don't know if you want me to spoil that for you, but definitely when you come across things called the MO discs in your playthrough, pick those up. And uh, and in the lab, when you get to near the end of the game, there's going to be three stations, and you have to put one MO disc in each station. And you'll find your answers uh, by doing that. So that's, I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll let you in on that. And then, um, and uh, I think you'll take care of the rest from there. I think there's another small key down here too, which will be good for Chris to use. All right, let's discard that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the stained glass hallway. Yeah. Cause I think before in the original version, it was paintings. Um, and then, uh, and then it was, uh, and then they changed it to stained glass in this one, like colored stained glass, um, that you have to like change lights out on and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go back to that room downstairs with the, uh, with the small key. I just, I just want to unlock it for now and, and ditch the small key. Oh, there's ink ribbon, sweet. And then over here we have, uh, we gotta move this, and this will give us the other half of the um, the uh, piano notes, I believe. The Moonlight Sonata, one of my favorite songs, and probably because of this game, I love classical music, and uh, I think this game is one of those one of the reasons for that. Um, so then we can pick up this. Oh wait, you know what? Let's leave two spots open because we're gonna we're gonna need um, to carry the which call it's back and forth the shields and stuff. So Chris here is attempting to play piano, doesn't know what the heck he's doing, but luckily someone hears him playing, and uh, and Rebecca has had some training on a piano. That sounded like Moonlight Sonata. I don't know how she knew that. <laughs> from from my bad like playing of the song. I think they do this thing where she plays a little bit and then she screws up and she needs time to practice. 
I don't know if they kept that in or if that's just from the original version. So we'll find out here in a second. Um, but yeah, just one of many uh, puzzles that Trevor installed on Spencer's uh, behalf. Oh, what was that? Or under his orders. My interpretation is off a little. Let me practice for a while. Sure. All right, we'll let her practice. But don't get too carried away. Oh, I won't. Little, uh, Martian Cat says, Lil C, you just got to do it for you. Let people know I'm no pro, so I'm dying and failing a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, in the video description or something, just put like, hey, I'm a noob at this, and, you know, come watch me die and laugh at me or something. Like, you know, just kind of play up to it. Um, and then you'll, you'll, you'll see that the backlash is a lot less severe. And And who cares, man? Like... Who cares what people think? It's it's whatever. If their worst part of their day is watching you run in circles in Resident Evil, then they got a pretty good life anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, Roddy says, uh, Martian Cat is also a writer, so that fits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool, Martian Cat. I love meeting other writers, too. What kind of stuff do you write? Do you, like, write, um, like, novels, like, prose novels, comic books, screenplays? Barry, I Let me know. That excited. And Martian Cat says, yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, here's this. So this research as well here that you get um, by Martin Crackhorn. I think in the original like, one, well, I there was like a part of it torn off. So in Chris's unnatural. game, you got the full letter, but in Jill's game, I think you got a part of it. And Urzatron probably correct me Where's on that one. Um, oh no, she does. She points out that it is torn off. Um, and yeah, I think uh, Barry, like in the novel, they they say that Barry. Tuck, tore it off right before Jill came in and tucked it in his pocket or something. Because um, it had something to do with Umbrella. Like, Barry right now is, like I guess, going around just gathering things that fully say that Umbrella is responsible for something. And that's that's kind of his mission, is to make sure these guys don't get any closer to um, finding out that, you know, that truth until, you know, I guess Wesker wants them to or something. Um... Lil C asked, did Rebecca live in this story? Um, yeah, no, she, yes. Uh, she, she, well, it depends. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that, that comes down to you. Um, oops. That was not what I wanted to do. Um, it depends on you. Uh, you could, there are events and actions you can take in the game that, um, where she could, uh, die, actually, I believe. And, uh, there's versions of the game where, like, you know, the, there's like I think there's like ten different endings maybe maybe a little bit more for each uh, for total for both characters um, and so there's like you know endings like where Jill if you're Chris Jill and Rebecca survive if you're Jill Barry and Chris survive then there's one where Barry doesn't survive Barry you know it, there's like different mix and matches combinations that you can do um uh, uh, Urzatron answers, as of 2015, Becky's still alive. Yes, LOL from Lil C. Urzatron says, teaching at a university in Australia somewhere. Um, yeah, and I, I think I, I've been hearing rumors and stuff, and uh, we talked about this yesterday, Urzatron and I, that she may be in the next CGI animated movie that's supposed to come out next year. Um, so that'd be cool if she is. Uh, Mar Martian Cat says, I mostly write poetry and short stories. I would love to get into writing novels and screenplays. Side note, followed you on Twitter. Oh, awesome. I will... Did I follow you back today? Did you just did you do that earlier? Or, um, I will uh, have to follow you back. If, if and if you get anyone else wants to follow me on Twitter, I am at exploding bullet, and then on Instagram I am at uh, seek and destroy. Step on it. Oh, well, it's dead. But it's funny because you know. That was, I remember with Res Evil Zero, like even replaying it a couple, or what was it, like at the beginning of the year. I think I play, replayed it and I bought this, the collection for this, like in January or February. And it was like a late Christmas gift to myself. And um, I remember just being upset with like the fact that they're actually going back and telling Bravo Team, a Bravo Team storyline, and really they don't. They, they tell a, a, Re a Rebecca Chambers story with this new made-up character named Billy, who I didn't mind so much, but it was just like, 
I'm like, what about Richard? Like, I, I, I learned more about Richard and Forrest Speyer in this game than, uh, than in, uh, in Resident Evil Zero. And I feel like Resident Evil Zero should have been the game that did that. But I think they were just like, well, we don't want to have, we don't want to just have you play, the, you know, in the mansion, and, uh, and, and while all your teammates die or something, and then you know, and then you're just replaying Resident Evil One. So I kind of get that to an extent, but like, there, I don't even think there's a cutscene where you get a really good shot of Forrest or, uh, or Richard in the uh, Resident Evil Zero. So, so I don't know. I just remember being really disappointed in that game because the story was very flimsy. And then also on top of that, they they decided to make... Um, like, the, the fact that they felt they needed to go back and explain how the virus broke out, I didn't care. Like, especially when it's like, oh, it's leech... Like, it's a guy who controls leeches and he has a connection to Umbrella. It's like, all right, that's an interesting villain. But, uh, but then wouldn't there be leeches all over this lab and... Um, and wouldn't they have someone mentioned that in the notes like oh you know an outbreak happened and there were leeches in this like when they remade this i thought the whole point of remaking one was to make it tie a little bit more into zero also and it really doesn't like it, it just zero still feels like a like an alternate universe origin story um on some level uh richard uh, always finds a way to die it's a special skill that <laughs> yeah uh, Robbie says he's just better off not being saved in the first place. <laughs> um, Lil C says them leech things was on point on zero. That's true. That no, like I said, like, I feel like that's an interesting villain that they they made with uh, Marcus, um, and it does with him. It helps go back and tell some of the origins of Umbrella, which is cool because it, it does serve that purpose, um, which it set out to do, which was which was, you know, give a little bit more history on Umbrella. So it definitely succeeds in that regard. It's just, um, the characters just feel like, uh, generic male A and generic male B, or generic female and generic male. And it, and it's like, no, but this is Rebecca. Like, shouldn't it be more than just generic female? Um, so yeah. Uh, 